Now you might think that a story from the US Navy, an example from the US Navy, is a rather odd choice to begin our conversation about why workplace culture matters and why you need to be intentional about your workplace culture. After all, you might think that, well, when it comes to culture, isn't it prepackaged in the Navy? The Navy is all about rules and regulation and discipline, so you could probably imagine that the culture comes in a little kit, a little culture kit, if only it was that easy, that you just had to unpackage and stir and you're good to go. Well, the incredibly inspiring story of the culture transformation undertook by the crew of the USS Benfold suggests otherwise. The USS Benfold is a guided missile destroyer, about 310 crew members, and the story of its culture transformation is told in the incredibly inspiring book, It's Your Ship, by Michael Abrashoff, Captain Michael Abrashoff. I've had the immense pleasure of interviewing Captain Abrashoff for my book, The Humor Advantage. I've met Captain Abrashoff at a few events we have spoken at together. He is an incredibly inspiring culture leader who gets, who understands the importance of culture. You see, when he took over command of the USS Benfold, it didn't have, well, let's put it this way, a stellar reputation. Lots of safety issues, disciplinary issues, and an abysmal crew retention rate of only 28%. Ouch! And on top of that, Captain Abershoff was the youngest commanding officer in naval history. So you could imagine the anxiety that he felt undertaking this command. Maybe you can relate, some of you watching, maybe you're a first time supervisor or manager or you're managing a new team for the first time and you know what that is like. But imagine stepping into that position with those kind of numbers and those kind of problems. So he looked at the situation and he realized they had a culture issue aboard the USS Benfold. He was going to focus intentionally on the culture. And in fact, crew exit interviews suggest that he was bang on in his assessment that it was the culture that were turning people away from the USS Benfold. The top four answers that crew members gave in their exit interviews as to why they weren't returning to another tour of duty were, drum roll please, number one, not being treated with respect or dignity, Number two, being prevented from making an impact in the organization. Number three, not being listened to. Number four, not being rewarded with more responsibility. Now, isn't it interesting that all four of those all tie together and feed off each other? And maybe you can relate. Maybe your culture needs to work on some of those. That's already a really, really valuable hint as to what you need to do if you are going to focus on building a stronger culture. So Captain Abershoff realized he needed to focus on the culture if he was going to both metaphorically and presumably literally turn that ship around. So he sent two messages to all of those crew members, and these are incredibly important messages for you to send to your crew members if you want to turn your ship around, if you want to ramp up your culture. The first message was, this is your ship. It isn't my ship, I'm the commanding officer, but this is your ship. I want you to take ownership for the ship, for the culture. I want you to be accountable for the culture on this ship. That is a message we have to deliver to our employees if we are going to be successful in building a strong culture. And the second message that he delivered was, I don't care how inexperienced you are, I don't care how young you are, I don't care if it's your first time aboard a ship, first time in your job, I wanna hear your ideas. I want to hear those 1% improvement ideas, those continuous improvement ideas. I want you to have a continuous improvement mindset to help us all turn this ship around, to help us all build a better, stronger culture. And if you are going to be successful in your culture, you have to deliver that same message. You have to have everybody be on the lookout and share their ideas for improvement on an ongoing basis. And then he realized if, if he was going to make an impact fast, what he had to do was have a conversation with every single crew member in order to build trust, in order to get to know them. One of the things you're going to hear from me time and time again through a 
throughout this course is about the importance of conversations at work. I think we need to have more conversations and less meetings. The quality of your conversations will largely determine how successful you are with your culture building efforts. So we had a conversation with every single crew member and asked them about their families about their hopes, their dreams, their fears. Why did they enlist? He wanted to build trust. He wanted to build a personal connection, which is absolutely critical in any workplace environment, in any team. And then he asked every single crew member three very simple but important questions. You know, sometimes I think we overthink this, we overcomplicate things when it comes to making changes in our culture. It doesn't have to be complicated. And I will circle back to these questions at the end of the course. The three questions that he asked every single crew member were, number one, what's one thing that you would change about this ship? Number two, what's the number one thing you like about working aboard this ship? And number three, what's one thing you didn't like about working aboard this ship? That's it. And he listened. And then together, because it was their ship, everybody's ship, they focused relentlessly on the culture. They focused relentlessly on communication, communication, communication. They focused relentlessly on better recognition of each other, of recognition of the employees, two central themes that we're gonna come back to time and time again. And they focused, even in the US Navy, on having more fun in the US Navy. Oh yeah, they injected more fun, more humor. They had wacky theme days and contests. They would kidnap Michael Abrashoff's Docksider shoes and hold them for hostage. They did pranks like that. They upped the fun factor and they focused intentionally on their culture. And the result of being intentional with their culture, after just 15 months, they went from being considered the worst ship in the US Navy to the best ship in the US Navy. They went from a crew retention rate of 28% to a pretty hard to argue with 100% because they focused relentlessly on culture. Those are the kind of results you can get if you focus relentlessly on your culture. But here's what great leaders, what great organizations get is that great cultures don't just happen. They don't happen by accident. You can't fake it. You can't buy your culture at Costco or Ikea. If you bought it at Ikea, you probably wouldn't understand the instructions. You've got to be intentional about focusing on your culture day in and day out. You need to remember that everything a culture leader does, and by the way, when I say leader, as we'll talk about soon, I'm not talking about necessarily a boss or supervisor or manager. Anybody can be a leader, anybody can be a culture leader. In fact, the more culture leaders you can create, the more successful you will be. And everything a culture leader does either contributes to the building of a positive culture or it detracts in some way from your culture. You need to decide and you need to be intentional when it comes to building your culture. But before we talk about how you can do that, we're gonna spend some time talking about why culture matters.